three-pointer. Appleton West is moving into the semifinals with an 81-66 to 66 win over Milwaukee Custer. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. It seems like everyone's getting a digital camera, and nobody has more choices with all the latest technologies than American. Over 30 digital cameras on display. Or simple credit card. The top brands like Sony, Nikon, Toshiba, Olympus. State tournament. I'm Brian Groff, joined by Steve Randall, who's the first timer for the broadcast, and we're getting ready for a good matchup tonight. What do you see are some of the matchups between Brookfield Central and Fond du Lac Card? Well, it should be a good ball game. Uh, Fond du Lac coach concern is containing Thomas. As good as Holman and Strickland are, he feels the, mat, uh, the matchup for Thomas will be a problem. He's so physically imposing and they'll need uh, to double and triple team and possibly even use some gimmicks, which uh, is not uh, something that Fond du Lac normally does, just be able to contain him. We take a look at some of the stats for the Menards points of the game, Brookfield Central, Luke Holman and Joe Thomas. For Fond du Lac, Robbie Springborn and Chris Saberlick. Yes, uh, uh, Coach Adams knows to defend Fond du Lac. He needs to be able to keep Robbie Springborn, the point guard, out of the paint where he's going to, going to be able to penetrate and create points for himself and all his team. They have to defend uh, Springborn very tight, uh, not give him any shots. He's a shooting guard and very good at it. And all the Brookfield players need to ready to handle the multitude of screens that Fondy will give them. We're getting ready for the final Division I quarterfinal matchup. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network State. Advanced technology. It's all around you. Cell phones, laptops, and of course, the road-gripping, rain-loving Bridgestone Taranza. Stops on command, corners like a dream. Today, and thousands of miles now, the new Bridgestone Taranza LST. If only your browser navigated this well. Pops, the tire professionals. We know tires. You should know Pops. stop you from satisfying your late night hunger. Taco Bell is open late. Tonight, pick up a chicken quesadilla with grilled all-white meat chicken and three melted cheeses. Want to spice up the night? Think out open till midnight or later. Counting down. Measuring track. could generate hundreds of thousands of calls in an instant. At SBC, if we can handle hurricanes, floods, and earthquakes, we can handle the rad boys. Ready for anything. Hello? Any more tickets? SBC. With your here's Mike Mankey. And now, here are the lineups for tonight's Division I quarter between the Brookfield Central Lancers. And the Fond du Lac Cardinals. First, let's meet the starters for Brookfield Central. Number 10, Mike Martin. Number 12, Evan Sheenbein. Number 22, Rob Osprung. Number 24, Laurie Banks. Number 30, Mike Jacobs. Number 33, Tony Williams. Number 34, Ryan Gordon. Number 40, Ben Sandstrom. Number 41, Ryan Leader. And number 50, Michael Mars. Now let's meet the non for Fond du Lac. Number 4, Matt Saborski. Number 11, Pat Randall. Number 12, John Shavey. Number 13, Bobby Springborn. Number 24, Ben Number 25, Kyle Shepard. Number 13, Eric Jordan. Number 32, Jim Dilling. Number 43, John Conan. And number 44, Sherman Threets. The starters for Brookfield Central. Starting at forward, a six foot two inch senior, number 42, Steve Johnson. Starting at center, a six foot eight inch senior, number 54, Joe Thomas. Starting at guard, a six foot 
two inch senior, number 20, Brian Hillis. At guard, a five inch senior, 11, Ben Strickland. And at guard, a six inch senior, number 44, Luke Holman. Field Central is coached by Mark Adams. And now the starters for five. Starting it forward, a six foot junior, number 20, Sean Bartelt. Starting it forward, a six foot three inch senior, number 34, Casey Weist. Starting at center, a six foot four inch senior, number 15, Derek Art. Starting at guard, a six foot junior, number three, Chris Saberling. And at guard, a six foot one inch junior, number five, Ross Schumacher. Fondelac is coached by Dick Diener, and the officials for tonight's game are Ken Welch and Jeff Hartle from Keeler. Time now for the starting line brought to you by Option Herbicide. Option grass control that puts you in control. For Brookfield Central, they start five seniors, Hillis, John Holmes, and Thomas. The Cardinals, they have three juniors, seniors, Saberlick, Springboard, and Casey Weiss. Fondelac has the three juniors, but they're still a very uh, They all played a lot last year as sophomores, and they, uh, they also made the state two. So they have a lot of great experience. State runner up a year ago, Brookfield making its fourth straight appearance in the in the state tournament. Coach Mark Adams, this is his third year as the varsity coach. They met in the semifinals. Brookfield Central in the royal blue and silver. Fond du Lac in the red and white. There's the jump, and we are underway. Brookfield Central takes control. They lob it in. Joe Thomas, strong move underneath on the board. Good concern again. Being able to contain a, a easy right tempo. What kind of style does Fond du Lac like on offense? Well, they're going to probably be very patient. They'll control the tempo. They'll run stable it through a lot of screens, try to create some options the guidance of head coach Dick Diener. What do we look for on defense for Brookfield Central? Brookfield Central play mostly man. They'll try to give some good pressure. Um, Mike will try to break up. Martell drives, denied, and Brookfield Luke Holman, a sharp shooting guard with the ball, and he can out. Oh, that's off. Joe good. Thomas can't get the... Give him much room, he'll... Coach says he likes to shoot from the Lancer Shield back at the home gymnasium. It's a few feet beyond NBA range. Look bring more penetration and a dish play to Saberlick. They lob it inside to Joe the guy underneath. Joe. Well, that, that got caught without uh, upside and who uh, much had, had to follow up getting the layup. Tom eight inches tall. 170 pounds of basketball recruit. A bunch of good football players on the Brookfield Central team. The top five played in the state championship game. Out by the final team. They'll be fundamentally very sound. They'll handle the ball well and they'll uh, reap well to their size. The year 14 and 4 in the Fox Valley Association Conference where they took second place. And the three pointer is good for Chris Saber. That's something that Coach Diener said he wanted to do with ball screens for their shooters. Uh, but Thomas's man, what he's guarding, setting the screen, trying to pull the basket. Cut inside. Comes up empty. Central retains possession. Final Let's talk about the offense for Field Central runs. Well, they run a flex most of the time. Uh, all for the high post, low post, and then. Uh, for their individuals. How about Fond du Lac on defense? Fond du Lac, the, uh, they'll be pressure and most of the time they like the ball pressure a lot. What happens is they're going to have to double and even triple down on the people. So, Brookville will have to hit some shots by some people that don't have to quite as much. This is a lot to handle. Nice move to the bucket. Hit it to fall and we got a foul. And that's going to go to number 15. Minutes in the game. 
They'll bring in uh, Joe Dilling now. He's their backup center. And he's trying, trying to guard Thomas. Mentioned before, this is the fourth Brookfield Central, sixth state appearance overall. They beat Whitnell 68 to 48. Fine. He's dropped the hole and good. Penetration by Strickland. He's a nice athlete. Gets up and gets back on deep. Pokes the ball away. Loose ball on the floor. Possession. Goes to Fond du Lac. Watch for uh, possibly Sabre coming off the screen and getting a shot on the out-of-bounds play. It's coming here. Ends up being a two. Five points. He has all five so far. Five, four in favor of the Cardinals. Steve Johnson kicks it out. Joe Thomas up top. Good ball pressure to Holman and traveling. Holman called for a walk. He averages 19.1 a game. Answers. Fondue would like to run a little bit of offense, make uh, make Brookfield screens and working on the defensive end. The last quarter game, Division One. This is going to be a little different style game. Fondue to be uh, Coach Adams for Brookfield with a little tempo, moderate, moderately fast. Big time play for Fondy. He makes plays uh, at crunch time for the black. Saberlick out on the wing. Puts it back. See, this is the possession they want. Screen. Get the ball reversed. Make them work. Kind of get their legs a little fatigued. They'll affect the shooting later on. Oh, fair percentage shot as well. Baseline jumper. On Dillon. Well, I've got a switch on the screen. They want to see him connect on the shot. So far, Fondy's been playing a straight man to man with not a lot of trip. Talk about the guys who play football. Two, and they've won 19 in a row since. Some opportunities when he gets a chance. Drops in and thousand three WIAA tournament is brought to you by the Wisconsin Milk Wisconsin's Dairy Producer. Remember to grab hot milk. For six he has five averages 11 this season. First one right. Yeah. Missed very many free throws. Outstanding shooter. Next to the game. And Brookfield's team. Uh, Tom. Johnson was an all-state linebacker and home quarter. Football leg. One on the right. They found the right legs to run with. Big rebound. Casey Weist. Holman posted inside. Get Fake.
that is for this stage. There we go. Five to go. Play, look for time.
Dave Mark.
nine point Some plane in
drive and it's it had been effective for him. Close into 40 seconds left in the second quarter. Flex offense again now. Look for an outside shot. Gillis. Nope. This is the type of bust out that Fondy said they'd be looking for. Saber looks strong to the hole and lays it up and in off the glass. Saber look with seven. Fondelac opens up a 26-21 advantage. He goes Goes home and taking Bartell, trying to take him one-on-one, -on -one, but he just can't shake him this time. Strickland drives, kicks. Johnson. Wow. Final lap on the move. Plenty of time to get a shot. The spin and, and he up did. and the rolls power, and it's good. Robbie Springborn. And that's going to do it for two quarters of play. 28 to 21. Final lap. Stretches it into a seven-point advantage as they head into the locker room. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. Give your home a designer look without the designer price tag. Dutch Boy Dimensions Paint from Menards is a complete system that includes the ideas, instructions, products, and applicators you need to turn bare walls into beautiful works of art. Choose from a full palette of rich designer colors, textures, glazes, and finishes like granite and brush suede. On sale at 15% off. Plus, don't pay for 12 months now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. They keep things going at the end of the day. They take us into the sky. They keep us moving and keep us safe. They save lives. They create what we see. They create what we use. They keep us informed. They show us the way. They show us the world. 
They show us the future. They are graduates of Wisconsin Technical Colleges. Where would we be without them? We're at halftime of the Division I quarterfinal between Fond du Lac and Brookfield Central. The Cardinals with a 28-21 advantage. Mark Adams spoke to you before the game about a couple of points that he wanted to take a look at, and uh, we'll have more stats for you later on, but what did you see as some of the things going in favor of Brookfield? What do you see as some of the things going in favor of Fond du Lac? Well, Brookfield talked about the big three, turnovers, free throws, and offensive rebounding, something they've done very well in their uh, 21, I think 21 out of the 23 games they played in, the games that they had won. Uh, in this particular ball game, the turnovers hurt them a little bit. Um, offensive rebound probably even hurting them a little bit down in that second quarter. Fond du Lac had a great second quarter. They had this support to come off the bench and get some points for them. They were able to get some uh, fast break baskets uh, the latter part of the game, uh, the latter part of the quarter there, and I think that that was really big. They got some momentum going, and they had got great mileage out of the ball screen plays out high. So that'll be an adjustment that they're going to have to uh, take care of, as well as a couple of fundamentals. How much does it help these clubs because both of them are veterans of being here at the Cole Center, being here at the state tournament overall? I think it helps tremendously. Brookfield has, you know, has all those starters and those guys that have been playing uh, sports, uh, big-time sports here for, in some big games for quite a while. I would expect them to play at a high level, and I thought they did until maybe the last couple minutes of the quarter there. They played a high level and, and compete well. Fondy just knows how to win. They're just one of those programs that... Do a, good, do a good job getting into a close game and do a good job winning a close game. I said earlier, they just don't beat themselves often. They made some big plays toward the end. They had a player come off the bench who, I'm not even sure what the Sikorsky's average is, but he's probably doubled it, probably doubled it here in, in one quarter. In a moment, we'll take a look at some highlights and stats from the first half. First, we send it upstairs to Bob Radovich. Thanks, Brian. Well, it is basketball weekend here in Madison, but of course here in Wisconsin, football season is always right around the corner of the Green Bay Packers getting ready for the NFL draft at the end of April. But they also have their eyes on this week's WIA State Boys Basketball Tournament. Now, the Packers know all about how sports can bring communities together. Whether you're cheering on the Packers at Lambeau Field or rooting for your favorite high school team, arenas and stadiums draw communities together. As communities support their teams, the teams support their communities. They take pride in the places they live and work. It's a Wisconsin tradition. And these young people, the glory they bring to their communities and to their schools and, and the efforts they put forth, I think uh, you've got to salute uh, the, the coaches and the athletes for what they what they accomplish and, and how hard they work to accomplish it. Packers tight ends coach Jeff Jagosinski is familiar with Wisconsin community pride. He graduated from West Dallas Central. I think so. I think that, you know, the grade school kids look up to the high school kids. And, you know, the high school kids look up to the college, college look up to the pro. And, yeah, I think that's very important. I, I think that you do have to give back because if you're giving a, given a lot, if people give you a lot, you're, you're expected to give back a lot. The Packers traced their roots to the town teams of the early 1920s. In fact, they once shared their home field with a local high school. That relationship is unique among pro teams, and it's one in which the Packers take great pride. There's no doubt about it. We want to be a part of the fabric, not only of, of the Green Bay area, but the entire state of Wisconsin. And... The Packers and the WIA, a new association, and we're happy to have them on board. Well, if you forgot to set the old VCR at home, but you would like a VHS copy of any one of these state tournament games broadcast on television, Concept Productions has the solution. Just dial one of those numbers you see there on your screen, 888-634-8611 is the toll-free number. Just include $24.95 per game plus $6.95 shipping and handling. Put it on the plastic and in six to eight weeks, a tape will arrive on your doorstep. And we had plenty of video memories from today here. Day one of the WIA State Tournament, a good one in the Division III semifinals. Auburndale pulling away late to defeat Hilbert. And then a classic in the other game, Lady Smith. Brandon Weimer hitting a three-pointer with four seconds to go to knock off Kenosha St. Joseph 52-51. This afternoon, Division I quarterfinals, Eau Claire Memorial getting balanced, scoring the old Abe's advance over Janesville Craig 53-41. Next up for the Abe's Appleton West, the Terrors, Brian Butch, a state record 45 in a win over a very strong Milwaukee Custer team. 
a classic earlier this evening. Milwaukee King jumping out to a 16-1 lead and then hanging on to defeat Madison LaFollette, the defending Division I state champ, 55-48, the final there. And right now, it's at the half. Fond du Lac and Brickfield Central. The Cardinals of Fond du Lac leading the Lancers of Brookfield Central, 28 to 21. To recap that first half, stats and highlights, let's send it back courtside to our announcing team, Steve Randall and Brian Groff. Guys, take it away. Thanks a lot, Bob Radovich. 28 to 21 ball game. We're going to take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And this one, uh, very even early on. You see Saberlick. That ball screen play they worked so effectively in the first half. Trying to bring Thomas away from the basket, hit a shot. Back on the other side, Holman behind the back, and the no look inside to Strickland. Very good team ball. And then Saporski was heating up from long range, hits the three there. Yeah. Yeah. Real catalyst for the run in that second quarter. One Matt more Saporsky. One more three-pointer for Saporsky and some of the stats. Field goals, 35% for Central, 42 for Fond du Lac, 7 of 8 free throws against 5 of 10 rebounds. These are some of the stats that you were talking about. The rebounds, 14 to 17, turnovers, 5 to 3. Typically, Fondy does a good job in these, and so does Brookville. The three areas that, that Brookville looks looks to try to win. Um, they're, they have the free throws. They've made 7 out of 8 versus 5 out of 10, but behind them the rebounds and the turnovers. I think that's a critical area of why uh, Fond du Lac has the lead right now. Strickland is the leading scorer. He has 7 for Brookfield Central, followed by Thomas and then Johnson and Holman. Fond du Lac is led by Saporski with 8 and then Saberlick 7. Wiest and Springboard with 4 apiece. It is time now to take a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. The high school kids, and you know the high school kids look at their college, college look at their flow, and yeah, I think that's good. What's wrong, Lee? I just gotta check on him. Define a genuine Wisconsin community bank? For you, it means local decisions. For us, it means local commitment. And for the community, it means local investment. The Community Bankers of Wisconsin. We're the definition of local. Visit us at communitybankers.org. Got his stats. Halftime Division I quarterfinal. Fond du Lac out in front by a seven-point margin over Brookfield Central 28-21. Take a look at some of the numbers for number four, Matt Saporski for the Fond du Lac Cardinals. And Saporski's a guy who's come off the bench and in uh, 51 points on the season throughout 20 games, he has eight points tonight. He's averaging about two and a half a game, and but his... But it's most because of limited playing time. He's a player that at different times Coach Diener has chosen to use, and oftentimes he's come in through for him just like he had tonight. He's a very good shooter. He's typical of what he does for them when they get a chance to get him some open looks out there. Great. Again, just uh, if you're going to win, if you're going to win championships, different guys are going to step up for you at different times. And you look at the the stats that we had. Um, as far as leading scores, both teams you saw were balanced, you know, it's, and, and they're going to look for different things as well, uh, it, depending on what teams do to stop them. When you play the better teams, they're going to slow down, if not shut down, some of your some of your top guns. So, Doesn't that some to, seem to be where you can get a wild card, where if you get a guy that comes in off the bench after the starting five kind of neutralizes each other, and all of a sudden you got a guy that can come in and help out when he's getting a couple minutes here and there? Uh, for sure. Um, 
do. They, they took a little different approach. Spani took a little different approach this time uh, offensively. Defensively, they're pretty much the same as they always do. Uh, real hard ball pressure. But defense, offensively, they set a few more ball screens and they pulled that center away from the basket. And like, like I said earlier a couple times, it's really helped them out a lot. And there'll have to be an adjustment this half. If this game tightens up, look for the go-to guys to be homing for, uh, for Brookfield and probably Springborn for uh, Fond du Lac. They'll try to create some one-on-one -on -one for each other. Those are the themselves. guys with the experience, guys that can create shots, those guys can get to the basket. We're getting close to starting the second half of this ball game, about 20 seconds. We have an update. The Wisconsin Badgers won over Weber State. We're going to take a look at the score. 81-74, to 74. so the Badgers off to a good start in their NCAA Midwest Regional, the first round, 81 to 74 winners over Weber State. Of course, Marquette won earlier today. Travis Diener, 29 points, and his uncle Dick Diener getting ready to go to lead his troops. Fond du Lac Cardinals into the second half, and Fond du Lac starts out with the basketball. Same starting lineups for each team. And we're ready to play. Starting with some just regular motion offense early here. It's like I think that we're going to try to do here is run some clock again, try to wear them down. That's probably the first possession. They'll just try to break them down, make them play defense for 45 seconds or so before they start looking at the basket. Screen after screen after screen. Here comes the ball screen play. See if they defend it a little better this half. Springboard spin inside. Fouled on the shot. There's no switch. It was just a little quick show, and then Robbie gets in that paint. He's great at drawing fouls. Springboard had four points in the first half. And he's at the free throw line for a pair of throws. Another very good free throw shooter. <laughs> Always seems it's to the jinx, jinx isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So you're getting used to the broadcast jinx if once you say it. <laughs> you're rooting for the other team, that's what you say. Huh? Is that how, now I know how to handle this from here on out. Let's talk to someone from Central. That one's good. You won't miss two in a row. That? You won't miss two in a row very often. I was safe no, on that. There we go. The 2003 WIAA tournament is brought to you by Rural Insurance Companies, providing a full line of insurance products for Wisconsin's families There's and high, businesses. Excuse me. There's that high-low game again. They got Thomas very deep in the paint, and he was able to get a good shot out of it. A couple of Lancers on the floor back at midcourt. Final X still pulls it up. Lancers able to get back on defense. You see the discipline of Fond du Lac. They will, if they don't have something easy, they'll pull it out and they'll work their offensive. Otherwise, you get on the coach's bad side, don't you? I won't last very long with Coach <laughs> Diener. Let's play it right. Right now, he's, right now he's motivating Robbie. <laughs> it, <laughs> us, it usually works. He knows who his competitors are, and those are the guys who are out there playing. Well, it's working. Here comes Saber look off the screen again. They're trailing them a little bit. Weast. This is again, they're really, they're really trying to break him down. Got a turnover. Pressure by Johnson, and he takes it all the way to the rack. Very impressed with Johnson's combination of being a good, strong athlete and his aggressiveness. He, he gets after it real well. Johnson with six points. The margin is six points. Arndt gets his guy in the air and draws the contact. Could be the third foul on Thomas, I believe. <laughs> take a look at how Johnson came up to pick a pocket and take it to the other end. Casey Weiss was uh, looking to make a pass and just didn't see Johnson coming in behind him. Eric Arndt, guy who plays the five position, undersized. A lot of times, coach says he does the dirty work. He has the knack for getting the post basket. Does a lot of the things that you won't see in the statistics sheet. He shoots free throws real well. Also, he doesn't score a lot, but he'll he'll hit his shots when he's given the opportunity. He just hit those two free throws. He has two points in the ball game. It's a big part of the game right now. They just got Thomas's third foul early in the third quarter, and that's uh, that'll alter some things that both coaches will, will be able to do and will have to do. Thomas takes his seat on the bench. We haven't seen Holman really get in the groove yet. Cartel is really hounding him. 
the Orange put the ball inside. But Charlie just did not give them much, uh, much room to move at all. Holman's just one for seven shooting so far. And again, the one he made was the only one he had really any space on. They're just, they're just all over. He has any room, very little room to move. It was Tony Williams shot off. And what happens sometimes when you start to get a little behind, you start to make some mistakes you wouldn't normally make. Uh, Johnson's trying to steal the ball off the rebound rather than get back on defense. And it really doesn't help at this stage. Ben Strickland called for the foul. He has three of them now. We also see Brian Hillis, number 20. He has two fouls. <laughs> right to the bucket, right to traffic. Robbie Springborn. Some clear out again. Fondy is very good on dribble penetration. We got a call. A timeout called by Coach Mark Adams of Brookfield Central. It's a 30-second timeout. What does he want to talk to his team about in the huddle? Well, they're going to have to do something offensively to free up their shooters a little bit better. They're just having to work so hard to get any looks out there, and, and the percentages aren't with them. And then defensively, defensively, they're just going to have to have a little better help defense. They're, they're getting hurt in the one-on-one -on -one too much, and they're going to have to get somebody over there to, to not give them the easy shots. Make, make Fonda hit some shots in the perimeter. Fonda Lack opens up a 10-point lead in the offense that they run. It's going to be pretty tough to climb back in. I think they had good strategy as always going into this ball game. They knew they knew the strength that Brookfield has in the vulnerable areas, and they've really been able to maximize their abilities against a couple of areas where uh, Brookfield was was vulnerable. Luke Holman looks looks the inbound to Brian Hillis. Back to Holman. And there's Bartell on Holman again. They're going to try to get him some shots, I'm sure, but he just just having so much trouble so we're gonna post him right now it's a back spin. try to find some shots closer to the bucket to kind of get you in that groove and that pass went air mail Tony Williams tossed it out of bounds you need to understand what Holman's going through is that when Fond du Lac beat Appleton West Bartell guarded uh, was it was one of the main guys that was guarding Brian Butch and held him a single figure so he's just very tough in there that was the sixth turnover for Brookfield Central Fondy being very patient again. Brian Hillis foul. It's going to be his third. Definitely working to their advantage. Now the tempo has, is bogged down. And uh, earlier it was fine for Brookfield. Right now it's not. It's totally all Fondy tempo. How deep will you see Brookfield Central going, especially when you consider the foul? Well, they, they have to go. They typically will go seven or eight. But when you get in trouble, you can't go quite as deep as you'd like to. You're just going to have to go through money plays. I think Coach Adams eventually is going to have to uh, take a chance on his foul trouble players or they end up too far behind. Springboard's getting into a groove. He has nine points. Holman down to a knee. Dribble passes off. Hillis working up top. See the ball pressure Fondy puts on the players. It just is not a lot of room. He'll take a charge. Yep. Johnson, that's an offensive foul. So he's hurt. We're going to take a look at what happened on that play. Chris Sabler took a charge on an all-state linebacker, and that's just not one of the things you want to do very often. He's in pain. There we took a look at it, and he's getting tended to Dick Diener out on the court, along with the trainers. I'm going to guess that he... Let's see. We're going to take another look at it and see if we can figure out... Yeah, that's a load coming in there. Uh, not going to see much on that one, but... the court. Here's a better angle. Yeah, it's still tough to see. It was offensive all the way. Again, that's where we talk about the, the tremendous ball pressure forces you to put the ball on the floor. Now you have to have some good weak side help and Sabalik just rotated over perfectly in a great position took the play unfortunately got hurt that holds off a couple of points that the Lancers would have got so it keeps it a 12 point game so Lancers out at midcourt Sabalik is up getting helped off it looks like it's an ankle I believe is what it looks like it is 
as the fans chant his name. Saberlick, the conference's leading three-point shooter, second leading scorer, great three-point shooter. You know, he's, he does a lot of things from, he's a real fine defensive player. He's, he is, he's athletic and he really gives some good ball pressure. He can guard, he can guard good players and he helps a lot in their ball hand. That's a key thing for Fond du Lac is, is that they can control Temple because they all handle the ball so well. And he's one of them, you know, being the other, other starting guard, he does it extremely well. Now the Cardinals look to John Shavey come on in and take his place. So as soon as we're set and ready to go, the Cardinals will take control of the basketball. 4.15 to play here in the third quarter. Brookfield Central with five team fouls. Zero for the Fond du Lac Cardinals. He just... Bobby just beating, beating his men just on a regular basis out here and creating some problems for him now. He's kind of taking over this quarter. Springborn off the pick and comes outside. Just doing what he can to shake his guy. He'll get the ball. He'll probably get some penetration. When you play him that tight, he opens up penetration. And there he gave it off. Skip it across, back up top. Great, great discipline again. And it's back to Springboard. That's the dribble, the pull up. Again, you're playing that tight. He's just too quick and too good with the ball. He's going to get a shot when he gets it back. He's made his last five in a row. He's made his last five shots in a row. Makes it 37 to 23. With Saporski's second quarter and Springborn's third quarter. Again, great teams have different guys step up. Johnson inside. Sorry, Holman inside. For six points. Miller runs some clock again, probably runs some regular motion. Just like last time down. Thought about a three, dribbles inside and comes back out. Shavio will help with the ball handling with uh, Sage Lookout and Silver Bartel. You'll see Gilling, or uh, Arndt and um, Sweet doing a lot of screening inside in this offense. It is. They broke him down. Got the layup. Yeah, right inside. Casey Weist. Most players only want to play defense for so long. Broke him down and another fine play by Springborn. Weist with six. Definitely you got to stay disciplined on defense. It's easier said than done when you're playing against <laughs> somebody as good as uh, Robbie Springborn yeah, is. Much easier for me to say it over here watching from the sidelines. I heard he was just a, I heard he was the second best player in the FBA. He must be pretty good. <laughs> Who said that? That could have been the head coach. We see the drive to the bucket. Draw the foul. That's uh, that's exactly what Brookville has to do. That you have to penetrate against that ball pressure. It can be dribble penetrate, it can be pass penetrate, but you gotta penetrate against it. You're not gonna get much looks many good looks otherwise. Hillis hits his first point of the game. Shoot 64% from the free throw line. You know, Brookfield has gotten some good scoring out of their fourth and fifth, out of their fourth and fifth scores. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. It takes discipline. Deter because without knowledge, there is no science. For great paint, head to Menards. Pittsburgh Ultra is a premium interior paint that covers in one coat and comes with a 20-year warranty. Interior Flat is on sale in thousands of colors, mixed free. Just $9.99 a gallon after $2 rebate. Brighten your home with big savings on Sylvania bulbs. A four-pack of Cool White Plus fluorescent tubes is $2.49 after $2 rebate. A six-pack of Glow Bulbs is $3.99 after rebate. Menards lights your way to savings. Save big money at Menards. Eight. 2 10 to go in the third quarter. Fond du Lac leads 39 to 27. Of course, it was a much closer ball game when it was a six point game, but foul trouble is starting to hurt the Lancers. When things opened up a little bit when uh, Strickland and Thomas had to go to the bench, it, uh, Fondy got some real, about three or four layups in that situation. I think one jump shot and three layups during that uh, three, three minute stretch or so. It's a critical part. You just can't play without your best players at this level. Brookfield Central shooting 40% from the from field goal range, and Fond du Lac is perfect. 
There's the ball screen play again now. We'll see how they adjust. Brookfield they back. Got back. Come right back with it. Brookfield back in that half-court defense. Do you see them trying to stretch it out at all? They'll have to. And Pond is not easy to play it against. So they're going to have to really hustle. Really hustle and then hustle back into position to save layups and easy shots. That springboard's quick, isn't he? He's very quick. He's, he's, he's very good with the ball, so that makes his quickness even that much better. Bartell will dribble drive and draws a contact. That's on Holman. Again, you're so vulnerable when you have to go out and pressure on the perimeter. It just makes it too easy for teams to find gaps and, and to create it and find the opening, and create a play. Thomas is back into the ball game. He has three fouls on him. Holman, that was his second foul. Robbie's not going to come in for the three-pointer like Sabre did on that play, but he, what he will do is look for penetrate off me. Bartell's going to try to work home in a little bit. He got inside and kicks it back out, and that oh. opens it up for the three. No. Nope. Arndt is just disciplined not to shoot the ball very much, and he, he gets open, and he still passed it out. There's a little double-team action they haven't done very much of. Strickland can't get the three. Great hustle play. Robbie Springborn challenged. That is King oh. <laughs> challenged the three-point shot and went in and got the rebound and also led the fast break. Great hustle play. Casey Wiest, eight points for Wiest, and we're down to 48 seconds to play, 39-27. 41-27. There's a high-low now. When they've run that, they've gotten Thomas the ball deep. That's probably been the most effective offense. That's so much trouble getting jump shots Jump shots for the jump shooters, but they haven't able to get Thomas the ball deep once in a while. See Thomas inside with the bucket and the foul. How does that change the complexion of the game now that he's back into the ball now game? It's big time on both ends, of, both ends of the floor. You have to worry about him scoring around him. You have to worry about guarding him. So when he's in there, it creates some, uh, forces some help defense. Thomas averages just a little more than 13 points a game, and he's up to eight right now. So he's climbing ever so close now. A nice, nice touch from the free throw line. He converts the three-point play. They you don't know, play for one shot. They'll run as much clock as they can, probably inside 10 seconds. Springborn will probably look to penetrate again and, and uh, shoot or dish. He likes the shot in the lane, but he will dish it once in a while, too. Weast with the basketball, guarded by Thomas. Shavy. Support now they'll get the ball back to him now and, and find Springborn. Yep, it's back to Springboard. It's right, right on schedule. Look to penetrate in the paint. They say he likes the shot, but he will dish it once in a while. Lose ball. Look at that shot over the head behind the back. Great awareness <laughs> by Holman, gave it a chance at least. <laughs> that's not exactly shooting from the Lancer Shield, but uh, <laughs> it's a shot. I got, now, a, I got a feeling he's made that in his lifetime. <laughs> he probably has. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. Show your pride, your school, your family, your business. If you can wear, wave, stick, or show it, Quality can put your logo on it. From t-shirts to hats, from jackets to jerseys, Quality has the state-of-the-art equipment, and we get the job done right. Our in-house artists can bring your logo to life or help you to design one of your own. Prompt turnaround is our promise as well as our guarantee. Call us today for a no-charge quote. This is where quality exceeds your expectations. Okay, people, we're rolling film. Do the sledge at full throttle, please. Okay. Nice. Okay, show me A cam. Good, good. Hey, hey, where's the green one? Where's the freaking green one? I got her. She's up ahead. Well, get up there. I'm trying. Come on, I'm missing the shot here. I got a pin. Yeah, we're uh, not going to catch that rocket. We need a faster chopper. You'll never work in this town again. It's time for our game summary brought to you by the Community Bankers of Wisconsin. We're the definition of local. Central of Brookfield, 37% on field goals. Final act, 47% free throws. 10 of 11 for Brookfield, 8 of 14 for Fondy. Turnovers, Central with 7, Final act with 4. A good part of that, a good part of that uh, field goal percentage is just better shots. Final act getting some open layups. We take a look at the ankle of Chris Saberlick. He re-injured re -injured a sprained ankle that he had hurt before. Probably won't return tonight, and he's hoping he can play tomorrow. If they're playing. 
Yes, they're playing. If you take a look, they're also looking at Shavy's ankle. This nice play, good set play by Brookfield Central. They're looking at Shavy's, uh, looks like ankle right now, too. So we got a couple guys down. That was a really nice play to start the third or fourth quarter. 41-32, favor of the Cardinals. Brookfield is the champion. They will not go down easy. Bonnie's going to have to play this quarter to, to finish off the game. See Ross Schumacher's in there for Fond du Lac. Again, another skilled player. He's got some shooters. There's that clear out crew. This time, I thought Thomas defended very well. Got in the right position. Can let him go by him. Can get that shot. Strickland on the other end. Holman. Trying to get a step on Thomas. Strickland needs to nail one for him. Yeah, it was in and out. Springborn. Please can hit that. He probably won't shoot it in this situation, but he, he can hit it from out there. Sikorsky. Johnson kind of locked been, up and Johnson's turns been very, it over. Johnson being very physical with him. Up ahead to Strickland. Oh. Went up for that layup and hit the bottom part of the rim. Take a look here. That last play, Holman. Side to Thomas. That screen lob play. Really nice. So you want to set the tone going into that quarter. Exactly. And you like to get some high percentage shots. So they're just trying so hard to get some, some outside shots. If you can hit some inside stuff, with the outside will get a little bit easier because teams have to double more. Oh, that's Tyler. Thomas back that's, in and gets the roll ball. ball. So what's happening right now is he's getting the ball a little bit deeper, and he's got so much power from in there. He's got so much power from in there, so it's very difficult for anybody from Fondi to do anything with him. He's trying to start doubling him. Thomas is up to 13. Is that something they couldn't do early on? He wasn't as deep? I, yeah, I think that they were settling for some other things. Right now, he's just fighting for a better post position. Getting that good stroke from the free throw line. That's been, the the best, point that's been the best part of their offense for sure. Um, they'd like to get some other looks for Holman and Strickland who's having too much trouble doing it. So you keep going back to that, get a high percentage ball game. As a team coming in, they shot 73% from the free throw line. That's outstanding. Absolutely, that's great team free throw shooting. All the intensity picking up here in the Cole Center. Brookfield Central is one of those teams that makes more free throws than the other team shoots, so you're going to win a lot of games when you do that. Springborn penetrate dish. Got the bucket. Nice job inside by Dilling. Yeah. Dilling will battle him in here now. He'll, he's a little bit better. He's a very little better jumper than Arnold. They're both of them are good athletes. Giving up some weight. Giving up some weight there in the inside. There he is, holding strong. Oh, boy, that's amazing. Nice. another one to go. You know, what's going to happen is that Fondi's going to have to double and even triple down inside, and it'll open up a couple of shots for him. That could get Holman in the ball game. Thomas has 16 points. It's come to life in the last few minutes. This is Coach Daniel's biggest concern, just that they wouldn't be able to physically handle him. 2003 WIAA tournament is brought to you by Menards. Menards is proud to be a sponsor of WIAA high school basketball and wishes your team the best of luck. Save big money at Menards. Can't get the free throw to fall. Forty-three to thirty-seven. Fondelac. Three from the corner. Nope. Offensive rebound and the foul follows on Johnson. Be interesting to uh, evaluate how much it hurts Von Lack not to have their starting guard in going down the home stretch here because uh, they're so used to playing together, plus all the things he's going to do make free throws and the ball handling. So Sean Bartel steps up to the free throw line. Shoots 65%. We're just six and a half points a game. And brings out. It's not. You don't want to start missing at this stage. Sometimes that has a lingering effect. They taped up Shavy's ankle, and it's like he's going to be coming in for someone. Johnson, the short jumper. Bondi's defense is starting to 
show some holes in it, and uh, Brookfield's getting much more aggressive. Suddenly, it's a four-point game. As we said earlier, they're champions. They're not going to go down easy. They're going to make you battle. Bring the home. Boy, when you need a bucket, Springborn can come up with it. That's, that's his bread and butter. There's Thomas Deep. Good pass out. Couldn't connect with a teammate, and it's out of bounds. Good idea on the pass out. Springborn up to 13 points for number 13. We we'll take a look at the last basket by Springborn. He's got inside and pulled up and hit. He elevates well and, he, and quickly. So he's able to shoot jumpers over big guys in the paint. He's a 5'10", listed as 5'10". Maybe. <laughs> with his shoes on, with a couple pairs of socks. <laughs> Playing bigger than 5'10 here. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. That's right. He's got all of that. Let's see if he can come up with some big free throws. <laughs> Average is 14.2 coming in. He has 13. It's super. It's uh, going to help Bondelak quite a bit that with four, a little over four minutes to go that uh, Brookfield is close to the super bonus. They're going to need to steal or foul here. Things don't go their way, you know, get better quickly, and that's going to help Fondy. Brian Hillis into the game for Brookfield Central, takes the place of Tony Williams. Springboard hits the second free throw. And now it's an eight-point game. Now there's Holst and Holman. Central's clawing away, but a oh, nice get play. Get four, nice block. That was a great help by uh, Casey Weiss down there. Yeah, the Lancers got within four. Here we take another look at that one. See the block by Weist. Nice play by Johnson. Finn, but couldn't get the shot or the call. Weist comes up with a big rebound. See Springboard fighting. He's on the sideline. for field central ball. Hey, central scrapping in there. They create a, create a mistake. Now central try to dig back into that margin. Looks like they might be running a set play here. They had somebody else take the ball out of bounds. Now here comes the triple screen. Holman's going to come off the double after the... Try to get it back inside. Too. Yeah. I think they'll take whatever they can. Thomas outside. He'll go inside now after his pass and post. Yep. It's tangled up. Huh. Is that Weist? That's Dylan. Weist down the floor. Or Dilling. Or Dilling, I'm sorry. Dilling was Dilling. battling and battling, but... You know, kept him out of getting the layup anyway. That's the fourth foul for Dilling, 16 foul. Coach Deere won't be too concerned about that. We'll just put arms in for him if he picks up his step. More concerned that he doesn't give any easy baskets. Strickland tripped up on the way to the bucket. Couple of real fine athletes playing point guard this ball game. Springboard in charge with the foul. One of the reasons they're as good as they are. Key position in basketball. Seven points for Ben Strickland. Eight. Move it up to eight. And he's closing in on his season average. 9.6. He's getting his points. Okay, hey, close it to six point games. It's a key possession game with a lot of time. Fondy's going to take care of the ball and they're going to have to get some shots. A little more than three minutes to play in this one. Don't go anywhere yet. Would really help uh, Brookfield. If we can just get a, get a turnover, things start to squeeze a little bit at that stage. to do when Fond du Lac is so patient on offense, isn't it? They're very good at it. Again, again though, they got a little bit more vulnerable with Sabalik sitting down, though. They lost one of their key ball handlers. See Robbie handle a little bit more. 
Sable again, re-injured an ankle injury. It's a bonus. Re-injured an ankle. That was a previous injury. Yeah. You don't re-injure an injury. Springboard's at the line now. He's on 13 points. For 15. Had a little lapse in concentration there. He needed to nail, nail that one. See what uh, Brooke Hill can take advantage of it. There's that low. And they go inside to Thomas. Point. Falls back into his defender. They uh, they really have a nice setup there. They have Johnson on a on a high post looking to be able to hit a shot. Thomas down low, Strickland and Holman and a little bit of an overload ball side. They got a lot of a lot of scores. See so Dilling inside there, he picks up the foul. That's a good, it's a good offensive set for that uh, Coach Adams is running with his team. That was Dilling's fifth foul. He fouls out with four points and a couple of rebounds. Coach is going to go with Saporski. It looks like a uh, ball handler, ball handler shooter. Now, who are the guys down low that are going to have to pick up the defensive slack? I think you'll have either Casey Weiss or Saporski guarding uh, Thomas. Just play him as tough as you can. He'll, he'll leave uh, Bartell on uh, Holman because, you know, can light it up so quickly for him. He's, he can keep him. That's the difference in the ball game right now has probably been their ability to uh, guard Holman. Uh, both teams are playing just about the way they normally play other than that. He just can't get open. See, Thomas has 16 points to go along with four rebounds. 17. <laughs> one by one, he's adding them up. He's made quite a few trips to the free throw line. Six of nine for field goals. Fondy's definitely run out of bodies to take him on. They're going to have to convert on this end, and they can't afford to. They can't afford to not score. Now it's back to that magical four-point mark that Central couldn't crack in the second half. He may come in this situation to follow the right guy for uh, Brookfield here soon. Who's the guy to follow, though? <laughs> well, I think you know Fondy hasn't shot him as well as they normally do, so they're just going to be a, a lot of guys will be vulnerable. Shaving Sikorsky aren't in the games a lot at this particular time. A support, um, Bartell has missed a couple, so they're a little bit vulnerable on the free throw line. Here's the advantage, though, that it's now with two rather than the bonus. They decide to follow Matt Sikorsky, so he goes to the free throw line. He had two in the first half, the second quarter, if I remember right, two for two, and he's an outstanding shooter. But it's a little different situation. Not everybody can hit him down the stretch. Sikorsky has eight points. Can we just add him up after I mention how many points? There we go. Automatic. <laughs> I think he's going to put uh, Coach Dean to put Arndt in to uh, battle Thomas right now. Second one is off the mark. So this time of the game is a little tough. We should make free throws for some and other people get a little better. 48 to 43. Trying to run the screen for a home in there, and he just can't get it open at all. And un oh, man. That was Thomas that inside. inside. He doesn't even notice that contact. It doesn't even phase him. There's a power move written all over it. You know, Holman is such a good scorer. I've been, I've been really impressed with him not forcing the ball. He's been working the team offense and stuff. Hasn't forced a shot really all night. He's doing a nice job of that. See Strickland getting in inside to Thomas. Um, I know Fondy's playing behind him quite a bit, and they're just not able to keep the ball out of his hands. He's just so strong, he converts on that, regardless of how much contact there is. Is that what Central keeps doing? Keep feeding Thomas inside? But certainly, he's getting two and three points every possession. Well, now they pulled within three. We talked about the four-point margin before, so now they're within three. It's a one possession. The danger you have with running clock when it's a one possession game is a lot of momentum you lose if they can tie it up off a turnover. It's, it's a dangerous thing and, and uh, momentum turns, it's not easy to get back. We'll see if Brookfield comes with any pressure here. Brookfield Central in the last three years has gone 34 and three in their home gymnasium. 
to make that home gymnasium mobile. <laughs> make it look like the call right. center. So the they go to full court press. The ball's where they want. Man-to-man -man full court. Somewhat token. Mm -hmm. It's a minute 25 Ooh, away. a turnover. That was not a good pass. No. They're drawing Thomas outside. Mm -hmm. They went for the close. turnover, couldn't yep. get that one. Okay, and there's the foul. Hit one out of two the last time. Foul on Johnson. Probably a good... Other than him fouling out, it's probably a good foul. Need somebody else to make that foul. So each team regroups as Steve Johnson fouls out with eight points and eight right rebounds. It's a good effort for Steve Johnson. Oh, outstanding. He just, I mean, he's a real hard-nosed player. He hits a couple of jumpers for him and really pounded the boards. Steve Johnson, one of the five seniors who start for the Lancers. Now they come back with Tony Williams. Take a look at some of the numbers for Luke Holman and Joe Thomas. On the season, 19.1 points per game for Holman tonight, just six points. But he is finding Thomas inside. And he's not shooting free throws as well as they need to and as well as they often do. This is getting to be the crunch time you talked about earlier. Missed it. Missed the second one. But he gets the offensive rebound and puts it back in. Brookfield had a great block out at every position and nobody took the ball. Sikorski with that putback moves to 11 points. 50 to 45. 55 seconds to play. Three pointer, no. Nope. Battle inside. And they they foul. Final, timeout. final act tracks it down and calls a timeout. They want to talk things over, see what they could set up on offense. Shady was trapped in the corner and made a good heads up play calling that timeout. You definitely want to trade a timeout for a possession. We're going to take a look at the free throw over on the other end. If you watch, you'll see good blockouts except for on the shooter. Except for on the shooter, everybody else is real covered. Nobody blocked out the shooter and he was uh, snuck in there for the layup. You see him run in and there's five blue jerseys around him. The ball was surrounded, but unfortunately for Fonda, or for uh, Brookfield. Does Brookfield have to foul here right away? If they foul the right guy. You don't want to foul, you still don't want to foul the wrong guy. Uh, usually in this situation, you'll tell them to uh, steal or foul, give them so much time, five or ten seconds to get your steal. So they can if still they can afford to be somewhat. They can keep the ball in Springhorn's hand. That'll help their situation for both the turnover and the foul. And final act dribbles out of there it, and there's the foul by Strickland. That was about right. They gave him a chance, gave him enough time to turn it over, and if they don't turn it over, get a quick foul. Final act got through it. It's four fouls now on Strickland. And it's the double bonus, so they're getting two free throws out of this one. Free throws, Brookfield 15 of 17. Good touch. Three Beezer, they'll still need to hit another one to make a three possession game. John Shavey hits the first. Uh, Coach Diener's doing offensive, defensive substitutions with uh, Saporski and Arndt. Saporski for offense and Arndt for defense. And the second one, good as well. Good clutch free throws by Shady. That makes it 52 to 45 with 43 seconds to go. For a Holman three right from here from range. Holman. He can hit it. Doesn't hit it there. Thomas with a finger on it. It's tracked down by Fond du Lac. And there's a the foul. Shady's come up with some big plays here. Foul goes on Tony Williams. They make the trek to the other end of the court for a couple more free throws. Fond du Lac tries to ice it. And Shavy at the line. Five points on the night. It's not what he had in mind, no. <laughs> now 
Fond du Lac pulls everyone off the lane. It's a three possession game and Coach Dino wants to make sure they cover the threes. It's the second one, nothing but net on that one. 35 seconds to play. 53 to 45. Do what they can to get off some long range shots. There's one Strickland off the rim. Offensive rebound, put back is good, Hillis. And Brookfield Central wants a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. I'll be working till the sun goes down. And spent the time another dollar bound. Sun goes down. There's no way to describe the kind of risk a small business owner takes. But there is a way to insure it. Rural Mutual. We understand what's at stake. Gonna be here, no matter how long, till the sun goes down. We knew the cancer was getting serious when Dad stopped laughing. He had advanced cancer, and chemotherapy was ineffective. He wanted to see his very first grandbaby and couldn't wait. Then we found a new clinical trial, and treatment gave him the hope. There was hope. It's like, yes, something is going right. The best thing anybody could have ever given me was my dad. Virgil gets another life. Marshfield Clinic, where the future of medicine lives. 24.8 seconds to play. Fond du Lac with a 53-47 lead. And Fond du Lac is doing what Fond du Lac does best. And what is that? That is win. They constantly <laughs> win. Uh, really... They have the ability to finish off games. Well, this team here, this particular team, has been in trouble late in ball games. Had some great comebacks and won. Um, probably three or four times this year, they were in trouble with a minute or two to go and were able to pull out a win. So, you know, they just they have the heart of champions and they have the ability to make plays when it counts. They get some turnovers and hit some shots. Robbie Springborn is going to go over for a couple of free throws. It looked like Brookfield Central was getting back into it when they got within three, and they were going inside to Joe Thomas that was working, but final lap keep holding everything off. They, they were able to hit a few shots there once it closed the three, and that really helped them out. The shade with those free throws was big. I think that you have two, two outstanding teams and programs, and they're both very well coached, uh, able to exploit things, different things on each other. Fonny was able to play a little bit better at this, this time. Luke Coleman had an off night for him shooting wise as I well. Again, I don't know if it was an off night. Sometimes your good nights and bad nights are based on who's guarding you. I think I'd give credit to uh, Sean Bartell and his defense. It, it was it was absolutely outstanding. He just didn't have room to, room to move and get any good looks. I think that if you'd have seen a normal defender on him, you'd have probably seen, seen Luke uh, shoot the ball well. He just did not have any space at all. He's got a foul to stop the clock at 12.8 seconds. We're getting set up for a couple more free throws. Pretty much all free throws the last few minutes. This is what uh, Coach Adams was talking about. Teams that win at this level, they all have some type of good defense, but teams that can play against an aggressive, hard-nosed defense. How what their execution of the half-court offense is big. And he thought that was really critical, and they've done a great, they've done a great job of that this year. Tonight, Bondi did a little bit, their defense just a little bit better than uh, Brookfield's offense. He's had coach clearing his bench. It's a great thing to be able to play in the state tournament. I don't care for how long, it, no matter how many seconds or how many minutes, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime for most people. And a great tribute to the seniors who played their last basketball game. And uh, Derek Diener in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, or wherever he's at, is going to be very happy when he gets the news. They're very loyal. Very, very family-oriented program. They're very loyal to each other. They care a great deal. See if some of these guys are coming and getting the scoring column. Pat Randall. And that is the ball game. Fond du Lac wins it by a final count of 59 to 47. They move into the Division I semifinals. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. They get up each day and they go to work. They maintain the power that lights our homes. They farm the land that feeds us. They care for our children. 
They fix what is broken. They solve problems. Well, they won the battle of rebounds, and they also shot 50% from the field as they got good shots. Very good shot selection, I'd said, in the last three quarters. That was, that was very big for them. They hadn't, didn't shoot the ball as well in the first quarter, but it kept getting better and better. 50% is tough to beat up here. Now a message from our local station. This is your WIAA network station. over some of the stats real quick. Cadillac shot 